Hello there and welcome to another exciting episode of Heart to Heart. I am Felix Osamuji. And I'm Mono Jacobs. Thanks for joining us today. As you know, we host great talents on the program and go right to that part where you hardly know anything. A part of that that you normally don't get to see. We hear about their highs and their lows and most importantly, we chat about their God factor. That's so true. Oftentimes, we take for granted a lot of things that we have and can do. Today, we get to see how God's faithfulness to us is far more than we can ever imagine. We have a great lineup for you, and I hope that you will stay with us till the end. First up is what inspires you. Kate takes us into another world and shares with us the joy of doing what she truly loves. Right after that, we return to the studio where Mono spends the next few minutes talking to our guest. Don't move a muscle. Hi, my name is Kate. I'm a makeup artist. If anyone had told me that I'll be a makeup artist, I'll probably laugh at the idea. All I wanted to do is regular nine to five, dressing corporately to the office, and really excelling at it. But somehow, I love fashion a lot, and I also love to look good. I was often captivated by the photographs of women in magazines. Then, I began to pay attention to makeup. I recall a colleague got married. Her makeup was so on point. Her eyebrows were perfectly shaped. Everything was just nice. It was then I realized what I wanted to do, to be a makeup artist. I enjoy everything about what I'm doing. I enjoy the fact that I can transform people's face and make them feel really good about themselves. Sometimes it's challenging, but I draw strength from the fact that I'm doing what I truly love. I depend on God to help me bring out the beauty in every woman because whatever God does is good. He made all things beautiful. He is my inspiration. What inspires you? From the moment he was born, he was described as a special gift from God. At a tender age, Emmanuel Daniel Buzabeye, popularly known as E. Daniels, had already started making music using empty cans and sticks. What some would have considered noise was just the beginning of making sweet melodies unto the Lord. Today, E. Daniels is a songwriter and self-taught multi-instrumentalist, spreading the faithfulness of God through music. This has given birth to Limitless, a vision that is aimed at sweeping through the minds of young people around the world to rise above their limitations by fulfilling their potentials. E. Daniels shares his story with us today. It's so good to have you around today, E. Daniels. Thank you. <laughs> I remember the last here. time we met, it was, it was an, an amazing time. But how are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm good. I know you've been... It's cool, <laughs> the weather. Okay, the weather is... It's been raining all day. Yeah. And I know you've been doing a lot of traveling. And how has it been? Amazing. Amazing on the road, doing what God wants us to do. It's so fulfilling to know that you are fulfilling purpose and you're just doing um, what you're supposed to do. As far as it's for God. Okay. Yeah. So tell me now, growing up, uh, our, our environment is already a challenging environment. Mm. Tell me what growing up was like, bumping into, into trees, bumping into <laughs> chairs. Was it, tell me well, what it was, it was like. It was, it was normal and fun for, for me. I, I grew up like every other normal child. I actually didn't know I had any challenge or whatsoever. So it was, I, I felt that was life. I felt okay, this is how growing up is. And I didn't, until I was growing up fully, like becoming mature, that was when I started noticing, oh, okay, there's something actually wrong. And then there's something called, um, um, I, I now discovered it's a challenge that I can't see and all of that. But while growing up, bombing into trees, 
um, stones and all of that. I, I saw it as maybe part of life. And you know, I remember talking. To stumble into holders to just go ahead. You know, I remember talking with Kobams and Supo sometimes ago. You know, and sometime ago rather. Yeah. And I remember him saying. He 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 would fly. Let me use the word fly over gutters. Exactly. As in his friends would tell him, exactly. "Okay, gutter," and exactly. he would just fly over. And but and there were times he bumped into trees. He bumped into stuff like that. But for you, though, it was just like all part of yes. the whole. And then you hear comments like, "People say, would they pity yourself? No, they won't pity himself." <laughs> <All those. laughs> okay, but were there any time? Uh, was there any time at all that you you felt maybe you were missing out of something? It's not fair. Everybody can see. I can't. Someone is talking about the color is yellow, and I really. Funny enough, I never felt that way for once. Um, maybe beca because of the kind, the kind of people I grew around. Mm. I, I was, I grew around a very loving and caring family and mm. friends, and I think for once, I think what what arises this thoughts and questions in your mind is where you don't get that love that you desire, mm. that intention that you desire, then you tend to feel sometimes like, oh wow, okay, how can, how else is life other than this? I, I don't think I felt for okay. once. By the way, you are a multi-instrumentalist. Do you play how many of the instruments? Uh, okay, I play the bass guitar, electric guitar, acoustic, drums, piano, uh, let's see, five, six. <laughs> but which is your favorite? Okay, so I've always had a team for drums, okay. which was what I started with um, early in life. But right now, it's the guitar. I can't run away from okay, it. Okay, so. can't run away from the guitar. Tell me about while you were in secondary school, when one of your teachers told you something about when you were playing the keyboard. The piano. <laughs> okay, so um, Mr. Jimmy was my... <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm calling his name right now because I know wherever he is, he'll be very proud of me. And mm. this experience, this experience just taught me to to move on in life and to become what I am today, actually. So I was learning, I was in the piano class. I knew how to, I felt I knew how to play the drums then, so there was no need um, joining the piano, um, the drum class anymore. So, and then one of the days he just came as we were learning, he was like, your fingers are not good for the piano, just go and remain in your drums and all. And as little I was, as I was, as I then, I felt, a little bad. I'm like, even if you want to tell me, say it well. Yes, man. at least. And I left, and that was it. I left the class, and my piano lessons was on my own. Since okay. then, I would just go after the classes and pressing notes. And, <laughs> and today, and today, uh, counting from back then till today, you have a, a, a an album, an audio album, fourteen track album, yeah. titled Love, Love Song. Tell me why Love Song. Why was it titled Love Song? So I'm a product of love. Um, everywhere I go, I, I say, I'm a product of love. God has loved me so much and then surrounded me with people who, have, who, who are able to express this love for me, even physically. So, and my own way of giving back to him, my own way of, I don't have, I can't give in cash, I can't give anything physically to God. If I have, I would. So I think the best thing to do, he has given me something also that I know I have and I've received from him, my, the gift of music and then my voice. So I just thought to give back to him in songs. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll, take, a, we'll take a quick break. Well, I hope you're enjoying your time with E. Daniels as much as I am. Now, if you think you've heard good stuff, there's still much more to come. Here is E. Daniels in one of his live concerts performing Glorious God. One, one, two, three.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Heart to Heart, a program that allows creative minds share from their hearts experiences that have shaped them and how they're using their gifts to be a blessing to others. And I've been chatting with creative and talented E. Daniels. You know, I make it a point of duty when I'm working on maybe videos or for my guests, the guests will have. Yeah. I end up learning the songs. I think I listened to Glorious mm -hmm. God over wow. and over and over again. And I love your composure on stage. You were simply amazing. Let me well, just say that. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so uh, one of the defining moments in your life was in 2013, right? When your mom passed. 2011. 2011. Yes. I'm sorry about 2011. that. I think <laughs> I, 2011, when yes. your mom passed. Yes. She, your, mom, your mom was like, I'll use it, that band that held the family together. <laughs> how did, yes, how did her going to be with the Lord affect you? Did it affect you in any way? It did. It actually did. Um, it, it, you know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And I will want to add that, lean not on any man mm -hmm. <laughs> also. Not your mom, not your friend, not, no, not any man at all. Because it felt like, for me, when, when, she, when she died, it felt like, okay, so the space was too obvious. And I'd learned to trust in God the more from that moment. And I'd learned to start living without Momsi mm -hmm. because everything then was um, me and my mom. So, my so she told you, like, practically did everything with you. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So basically, for me, it, it, it gave me a sense of, um, um, OK, find yourself for yourself. It was another chapter that was opened in my life. And I learned to start living life God first, then how can I find my way? You know, when I spoke with Jared, Jared is your older brother, yes. I asked the same question. He said he felt that it was more like mom, your mom going to be with the Lord helped you discover who you exactly. were exactly. and you're much stronger. Exactly. He, he said something like that. Sure, very true. Very true. Everything, just like I said, everything was about, we were practically living on her. So when she left, it opened this cover and we, we just discovered that we are, we are just nothing. There was something covering us. So we had to find a way to, to find our path differently, to find our purpose and then to live it. You know, I, I, I know what it feels like to lose a mom yeah. or your mom to be with the Lord, rather. There's that place that a mom, a mother has mm. in the home. I, I, I missed my mom more when I think I had my first child uh. and she wasn't there. What were those things you missed with your mom? What things you missed about her? Well, okay, so I would want to summarize by saying everything, <laughs> but specifically, I missed those moments where we would sit down. Okay, I, I, we didn't talk about this the last time we spoke. Mm, yeah. So everybody finally um, came to the agreement of the fact that I had a challenge. Okay, I could not see and all of that. But Mom C will still come back and want to sit me down and show me. He might come and see. This is color green. This is color red. This is color blue. So in my mind, I will be wondering, how does this woman want me to start relating and remembering all of these things? She, she, I don't even understand what she's doing, but I, it, it got me closest like, to her. She, she, she always had that, that, that moment we shared with her um, made me, that, that's the love I, I, I will always talk about, yeah. that from my mom, I, I I'm never the same. I'm never, and I'm. I don't know if I've experienced such. Tell me quickly events. about Limitless Crew. Okay, so it's an initiative to inspire young people. Young, not not just um, not just. It, it doesn't have any religion. Uh, any there's no. Uh, however, it is you are. Whatever it is you are doing young people generally to inspire you to become what you want to be and to become who you are, to find yourself. Um, we have creative minds, very creative minds. We have um, cinematographers, singers, designers in the, in the um, Limitless team. So, basically, so basically it. it's to call, like a call to young people to yes, live. to stand up and live their lives and become who they want to be. Okay, all right, I, I, I look forward to 
look forward to gathering where the Limitless crew will be. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> Definitely sure. We'll take a short break, and when we return, E. Daniels has something else for us. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back. We're almost at the concluding part of the interview. Now, looking back at where you started from to this present day, let me use the word this present day, what's your journey? What has the journey been like? What would you say, this is who I used to be? Like a story of once I was blind, now I say, this is who I used to be, but this is where I am now. This is where I used to be and where I am now. What are you grateful to God for? What's the journey been like? Okay, uh, first of all, I'm grateful to God for life because that, that's one thing I will always celebrate. If there's any gift I've, mm. I've, I've um, discovered that I have, one precious gift I have is the gift of life because um, without it, I've n I wouldn't have been able to mm. be doing what I am doing now and um, making the impact I am making. Um, for me, before now, it's just, let's just sing. Let's just sing for sing. Okay, you, you, you've discovered you have the voice, you can sing. But right now, I, I know more that it's all about, not just about the singing, it's all about impact, making impact, um, affecting other lives, and blessing lives with what um, the gift that God has given to you. So it's been an amazing journey. It's been so, so um, a positive one for me. <laughs> Meeting, getting to meet people I've been looking up to while growing up and all of that. So it's been... So, so now, um, if, if some, some other persons don't really understand what you're talking about, there's someone mm. out there mm. who is wondering, why is this guy still excited? He looks happy. He's like he's not bothered about um, whatever is, whatever seems to be mm. challenging around him. Someone there is struggling, finding their place in society, some of struggling with a low self-esteem as a result of the situations or circumstances they've gone through. Would you like to speak with someone this morning? Would you like to pray with someone? Help them out the same way God has helped you thus far. Yeah. Would you minister to yeah. someone today? Okay, so first of all, um, there's no way you would understand all I'm saying if, if, if you have not understood the salvation of Jesus Christ. I am who I am today, first of all, because Jesus found me and I, I became saved um, through the knowledge of the salvation of Jesus Christ. So I'd like to pray for everyone who is out there and is still um, wondering who this Jesus is. I want to pray that um, the salvation of Jesus Christ will, um, the love of Jesus will come upon you and then you become saved. and. For me, I'd like to tell everyone that um, take, away, take away the words um, D-I-S from possibility and then you get possibility. And then the word I-N from the word possibility, you still get possibility. So I don't, I serve a God who is a God of possibilities and I believe that so much and that's what I've worked for me. So would you like to pray with someone today? Yeah, sure. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace and your loving kindness towards us. Thank you for this time. Lord, I pray for everyone who is watching. I pray for everyone who is following this um, program today. We ask, I ask that your love will rest on them. I ask that your salvation, oh God, will rest on them. That you save them by your power and your mighty hand. That they will come to the saving knowledge of your grace and enjoy your love and your your joy, your oh God, will be their portion all the days of their lives. For in Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thanks so much for coming. Thank Sometimes, you very like, much. you know, when we come into the studio, you just want to have the whole day, but <laughs> time like sure flies. Very, so and, good to and, be here. and I still owe you that lunch. Okay. <laughs> Surely waiting for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you <laughs> prayed you along much. with E. Daniels, asking Jesus to be Lord and Savior of your life, then I must say you have made the most important decision in your life. I welcome you into the family of Jesus. Find a Bible-believing church where you, where you can grow and where the Word of God is taught. But just in case you have questions you would like to ask, our contact details are showing on your screen right now. Don't waste too much time. Give us a call. Notice what all these people have in common. None of them counted their cash. You know why? 
because they believed the ATM would not shortchange them. They believed the machine would do just what it was designed to do, which is to dispense the exact amount of money that they requested for. This is the same way God our Father wants us to trust Him, never to doubt His ability to do just what He says He would do. We were designed to trust Him. And so if we will trust a machine, how much more God our Father who loves us and cares for us. So the next time you go to God in prayer, remember that He cares so much for you and He is able to do just what He says He will do. What an interesting interview. No matter what we go through, God is right there with us. He is a never failing God. He remains faithful in and out of season. The lady in our next story tells us how faithful God has been to her even when everything around her spoke the contrary. Here is Sarah in Jesus Did It. All my life I wanted to be a gospel artist and I wanted to be an evangelist. I also hoped that I was going to bag a PhD in theology, really. <laughs> I had plans to get married, have kids. I was supposed to travel alongside some colleagues to Kano State in Nigeria for a trade fair. The driver was running on high speed and he was off the road. He skidded off the road and he was heading straight to a stationary bus ahead of us. Three times I called his name. Watch out, watch out, watch out. And that was the last thing I remembered. At the point that I got to the hospital, I was bleeding internally and they had to do an open laparotomy immediately to save my life. I recall the, the doctor telling me that day, he said, Sarah, I'm sorry about what happened to you, but you see, life happens. You would have to learn to live with, work with your hands, depend on your hands more, because from your injury, you will not be able to walk again. The first fear I had was that I was not going to get married again. Who would want to marry a woman on a wheelchair? I recall having a conversation with my fiancé then. I told him, I said, I cannot get married. Go look for someone else. He said, Sarah, we'll get married and the devil will regret that he did this to you. So I actually got married barely a month after my accident. For four years since the accident, I kept hoping that one day I would just wake up and jump out of bed. But it never happened. I was very angry and I was depressed for a very long time. I had contemplated taking my own life severally. The only thing that I kept looking onto were the people who did not give up on me and the blessings that God gave me. I remember one fateful day when I had my first son. He just started walking. He walked out of the house. I was shouting, Jason, come back. Jason, come back. I could not use the stairs because I had no help. And I just closed my eyes and I said, God, if you bring him back home, I would know that you're with me. Someone knocked my door and he said, Madam, is this your son? And I saw him with Jason. And that day I realized that I was actually passing through this fire, but I was not born in. I began to study the Word of God. I began to meditate on God's promises. And I took myself back to church because I actually stayed away from church for a long time. And I started to build my faith. And I started to declare my healing. I realized that as I did that, my heart was healing. The bitterness was leaving. And I was more joyful. 
I still have low moments. I still have days where I don't feel like leaving my bed. I still cry. I still wish that this accident never happened. It gets to a point where you have to let God have his way. And that was what I did. I began to enjoy the life, the second chance that God gave to me. Some of my dreams have come true. I hoped that I was going to get married, and I did. Contrary to what the doctor said, that I couldn't have kids, God blessed me with two boys. As a gospel artist, I have a single already, and we're working on the full album. I am Sarah Legogi, and Jesus did it. I know someone is out there wondering what good could possibly come out of being in a wheelchair or to be visually impaired. Truth is, it could have been worse but for God. Today, Sarah is still living her dreams and E. Daniels has a career with a vision of helping young people live beyond their limitations. God has shown that he is truly faithful in any situation. You know, today I'm reminded that even if the outcome is not what I want, he's still God and he will remain faithful to me no matter what. If you have been blessed by any of the stories, please feel free to reach us on the numbers showing on your screen. We have a dedicated team just waiting to talk to you. We'd love to interact with you. You can also find us on your favorite social media at 700 Club Nigeria. So that's how much we have for you today. We do hope you have been truly blessed. Until we come your way next time, we pray that you will experience the faithfulness of God now and forever. See you then.